Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're back with the GameSir T1S because I wanted to do a video exploring game controller lag or latency. In other words, how long does it take for a button push on the controller to register on screen? And I've been hooking this controller up to a whole bunch of different devices and I found some really interesting stuff and I've also uh, done the same with some other controllers and other devices as well. I'm just going to show you some of my findings in this little investigation that I uh, undertook the other day. I do want to mention though before we get into the video here that the GameSir controller that we're uh, looking at was provided free of charge by GameSir. Uh, the Moto X phone here was also provided by Motorola free of charge. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. Now, in my original T1S review, I noted that Sonic the Hedgehog, a game that I've been playing uh, probably for the last 25 years or so, just didn't feel right to me. That there just felt like a little bit of a delay, more than there should be, uh, between the time that I pushed the button and the time that Sonic jumps or moves around on screen and in fact I was noticing I wasn't playing as well and I thought maybe it was just my age but then a lot of other folks wrote in uh, during that review or after that review to say that they've had very similar experiences with uh, latency or lag when connecting Bluetooth controllers not just game server controllers uh, to their Android phones and it's something that is just kind of prevalent with Bluetooth so I figured there's got to be a way to measure this so uh, what I did is I took out my iPhone and remembered that it can shoot at 240 frames per second uh, so what I did is I took some video of uh, the button being pushed as well as the screen of the device that the controller was connected to to try to develop some way of measuring how long uh, the reaction is to the button press. And as it turns out, 240 frames per second is roughly about a picture every four milliseconds. So it should give us a rough idea, not a scientific idea, but a rough idea as to how many milliseconds it takes to push the button to see something happen on screen. So here is uh, the first of many videos I wanted to show you. So here I am uh, pushing the button down and you can see that Sonic just doesn't react right away. In fact, this is not me pushing the button down and holding it. This is me doing that uh, because, again, we're playing back in slow motion. So then what I did is I said, okay, that's really interesting. So uh, why don't we count the frames? And what I did is I just stepped through the frames from the time that the button was pushed down, like here, and just kept pushing one frame over at a time until Sonic actually moved. My count on this test with the controller hooked up via Bluetooth to the Moto X phone uh, was about 152 milliseconds. 152 milliseconds from the time that I pushed the button to the time that Sonic reacted. And there's a lot of things going on here when the phone is uh, connecting to this device. We've got the Bluetooth latency. There's a Bluetooth controller inside of the phone that has to receive that signal and then uh, send it on to the hardware that uh, then eventually gets over to the software to do something on screen. And there might be some video processing also going on with the display that might slow things down. There could be scaling going on to convert this very low res game up to the higher res screen of this Android phone. So a lot of different things are happening that are slowing this down in the process. So then I said, well, maybe there's uh, something, nothing, maybe there's nothing wrong with the controller. Let's do a test on a display that we know is really fast. So I connected it up with my gaming PC, had the controller plugged in via USB to eliminate any wireless lag, and we'll see how it works on that. And the display we're going to hook it up to is a gaming monitor with a one millisecond response rate. So let's see how that looks. So here on the PC, when I hit play on slow motion, you can see there is a much shorter delay between the time that I push that button down and Sonic actually moves on screen. So if I uh, go back over here to where we actually push the button and measure every one of those uh, 240 frames per second. Uh, you can see that although there is a lag here still, about 84 milliseconds or so, it is a lot shorter than the 152 milliseconds we had before. And that is because I think, uh, first of all, we've got a lot faster computer running the show. Uh, we've got a display that isn't doing much video processing to slow things down, and we're connecting up uh, directly via USB. So although we are still getting some latency or lag, it's a lot better than it was via Bluetooth connected up to the phone. Now I also plugged in an Xbox One controller to the PC to see if uh, the controller might have some degree of performance impact and sure enough it does because the Xbox One controller here as I push the button down uh, responded in only 52 milliseconds versus the 84 we got on the T1S. Again both are plugged into the same computer running the same emulator with the same monitor and the Xbox controller is a little bit faster about 30 milliseconds faster in its response rate so clearly that one is a little better tuned for uh, high precision gaming perhaps than uh, the T1S is when plugged in. So there's definitely some overhead introduced by the controller, but there's also some overhead uh, introduced by the display and all the other things that I mentioned. But how does a real Sega Genesis react uh, to a button push? It's going to ruin your life forever. Check it out. 
All right, so here is a real Sega Genesis plugged into a real CRT television with Sonic the Hedgehog running here. You can see even in slow motion, uh, there is very little lag when we push down that button and something happens here. So I'll go and grab every frame here and uh, we'll go find another spot where I push down the button. So there is the button push right there. And it's only about seven or eight frames, about 32 milliseconds until Sonic responds. And that is why I always say if you are a fan of retro gaming, do not throw out that CRT television, get a flash card or something and use your original hardware because you will not get a better experience than you will the way it was designed to be played. And we're seeing here that uh, even in the best case scenario on a gaming monitor with a GTX 1080 and an Xbox One controller plugged directly in, uh, we're still about 20 milliseconds uh, slower in response rate than we are on the real hardware. Whether or not you notice that is probably not going to be something you'll notice, but uh, the chances are if you were playing on that computer for a while and then went over to the real hardware, it might feel a little more responsive to you because it really is. And it's pretty amazing seeing uh, all these different factors that go into lag on games. And I'd love to hear from some game developers as to how you account for this now, because everyone's got different displays, different controllers, especially on PC. And even with a game console, they're all going to behave differently depending on uh, the television that they're plugged into. So this has got to be a real challenge for game developers to account for this stuff. So I'm really curious to hear uh, how this is getting dealt with in the modern era. And clearly for retro gaming, it's very difficult. Now I've got a spreadsheet that I put together here with a whole bunch of other scenarios that I didn't cover in the video. I'll link to that down below in the video description, including uh, how the NVIDIA Shield TV performs with this very same test. Stay tuned because in a couple of weeks we're getting in, or maybe a couple of days, uh, we're getting in an analog NT Lite, which is a uh, FPGA, Field Programmable Gate Array game console that runs the old Nintendo games. And I'm very curious to see uh, how that one performs with this same test, given that we are uh, essentially replicating or simulating the original Nintendo hardware on this chip, which means all the timings are the same uh, versus having the software try to uh, emulate that. So we'll see if that makes any difference uh, plugged into my TV over there. So a lot more to see. Definitely check out the spreadsheet down below in the video description, and this is Lon Seifen. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.